pineapples cut for your pineapple and cheese salad cut in the same way. Here is one and this is a dandy. Cuts any thickness or any size. Open it for a thick slice, close to the top for a thin slice. Saratoga chips, you can make them for three or four pennies a pound. Just pull the blade towards you like this. If you want the slices thicker than this, open the blade, there's a thick slice. Shoe strings for your Friday fish dinner, cut them down like this. Chop them up for your vegetable soup. What this knife is really intended for is for cutting the cabbage. You know the old-fashioned board, how you rip and tear, sometimes nipping the ends off your fingers? Lay it flat and pull it lightly towards you over the cabbage. The weight of the knife across the cabbage is all that's necessary. Why, ladies, when you get slaw cut as fine as this, you'll certainly appreciate eating it. The crowning feature of the set is the cutter that I'm going to show you now. This is known as the Champion Vegetable Mincing Knife and Noodle Cutter. Now, when you want to make some real fine noodles at home, you roll the dough out like this. Dip this into a little flour so it doesn't stick to the dough, and as you roll it over the dough, that will cut the noodles in long strips, ten at a time. Did you ever try to chop up the little nuts for cake? Well, I've seen ladies chop nuts and the nuts land up on the ceiling. Sometimes you chop the ends off your fingers. When you want to chop up a little nuts for cake, cooked meat, clams for chowder, soup greens to throw into your soup, making a little pepper or chicken hash is just a few strokes rolling it up and down. Why, here is without a doubt the meanest thing in the world to cut parsley. Put that in a grinder. You really grind it too fine. This machine, instead of crushing the parsley, cuts it quick, clean, and dry, leaving every bit of the juice and every bit of the flavor. Now, to clean this machine, you press the button. Rinse it out in a little water. When you're through using it, hang it up and let it dry. Here's one here that every lady should have in her home, known as the Parisian scoop. You lay it flat. Once to the right, once to the left. When you scoop them out, you'll get a perfect round little ball. You can pot roast these, cut them out of cheese or cut them out of butter. When you're serving a fruit cocktail in the summertime, take your fresh cantaloupe, scoop them out like this, mix them with apples, pears, and watermelons, makes a delicious fruit cocktail served with a little cracked ice like you see here. But here are the two ladies, if you ever do get it, you'll thank the day you've seen this demonstration. When you press, it locks. It's like a pair of human hands. Reach in the oven and take the biscuits out of the oven. Ever take the hot potatoes out of the oven and burn yourself on the elbow? A roast chicken out of the oven, a piece of meat out of the pot, spinach, asparagus out of the water, why around canning season when you're preserving the fruits, to take the hot fruit jars out of the water like that? That machine is worth dollars to you. And here's another one that I really know you'll enjoy having in your kitchen, known as the safety grader. No doubt you're familiar with the old-fashioned grater. I've seen ladies take a grater and rip the knuckles off. When you want to grate up potatoes for delicious potato pancakes, this has a smooth, flat edge, impossible to cut yourself. Just like you were washing clothes, you rub it up and down, and you really grate your vegetables real fine, retaining all the flavors and all the juices. Bread crumbs for your for when you're serving veal cutlets or anything like that. You want a little bread crumbs to fry your fish in? Well, there's the greatest proposition in the world. Use that for coconut, cheese, or horse ready. When you're through with it, just hit it down like that. That knocks all the food out. Rinse it out in a little water and hang it up and let it dry. Now, here is a stone made of carborundum and sapphire quartz, which is made purposely to keep these knives sharp. When they get dull, a few strokes over the edge like this, and you can put a keen cutting edge on it. If you have a dull knife or a dull pair of scissors, an old sickle or a scythe, a lawnmower, cleaver, an axe, 
there's a tool that will really put an edge on the knife so the knife will really cut for you. I just want to give you an idea of how sharp that knife really is when you sharpen it with that stone. Ladies, I've seen some of you try to open up cans. Now, there's a can of Campbell's baked beans. I've seen ladies open up a can and you poke a hole in it, go around the top, hippity hop, and your finger slips. Let me show you a real proposition. Look, lay it on the can, lift up the safety, and turn the key. That locks itself on the can. No harder than you were winding up your watch. Wind up the key and that'll cut the top off of the can slick and smooth. Notice how the end raises itself up in the air so you can lift the lid off, giving you a clean, smooth edge. Now that can be used for sardine cans, square cans or round cans, exactly the same way. Now this tool here, my dear friends, needs no introduction. This will save you on an average of 20 to $30 every year you use it as a peeling knife. Here's a grater for cheese, coconut, or horseradish, a fish scaler for scaling your fish, and when you're coring your apple, it's just a slight twist of the wrist, and there's the apple core. There's one more tool that I want you to see, and I want you to watch this one very closely. Many a times when you're baking a pie, you have a pudding in the oven. I've seen ladies wrap a towel around your hand, and many a times you burn your fingers. Hook this onto the pot like this and lift the hot pots off the top of the stove. You've got a pie pan in the oven? Catch a hold of the pie pan like this while you couldn't get it off with a team of horses. This will positively lift 100 pounds. There's a pail of water weighs 50 or 60 pounds. That's the way you pick it up. But there's one more tool. I'll be all through and I'll be finished. Oh, now the next tool and the last one is what they call the Sarah Byrne hard cutter. This was invented by the head chef of the Imperial Hotel in the city of Berlin, Germany. You place the screw into the center of the vegetable. Twist the vegetable until the threads catch a hold, then you wind this up. You keep winding until you utilize the whole potato. The faster you turn, the quicker the slices. Why, ladies, here's a machine for slicing onions. The first onion that you slice with this cutter, you bless the day, you've got a hold of it. Every slice cut exactly the same thickness. Every slice cut the same size. In making what they call a rosette, pull the vegetable out like this. Pin the ends together with a toothpick. Drop that potato into the hot fat and fry it. That will come out like a donut golden brown. If you're serving a nice fish dinner, a little parsley goes in the center with the fish all around it, makes a very appetizing dish. Did you ever try to slice onions with a knife? You know how you get one thick slice and one thin slice? Run the knife through the center. That will separate each slice individual. Almost like magic, there is every slice cut exactly the same thickness and the same size. Wouldn't you like to have a set like this in your kitchen? Why, of course you would. Now don't forget, attend this theater every week and receive this 12-piece fascinating... Ladies and gentlemen, the management of this theater takes great pleasure in making this announcement. To each lady attending this theater each week, they'll receive absolutely free a fascinating 12-piece kitchen cutlery set, one piece each time. It is really interesting and amazing to know how you can prepare your meals in an appetizing and pleasing manner. There's an old saying, and a true one, that what is pleasing to the eye is bound to be pleasing to the appetite. I'm going to demonstrate this set to you, and I want you to watch it very closely. The first cutter that I'm going to show you, now this first one is known as the Parisian cutter. 
wind it through the potato like a corkscrew. When the cutter appears on the opposite side, pull the cutter out. Place the handle in the center and twist it out. This is what they call a French curl. When you fry these, they come out like doughnuts, nice and brown. Serve them with your steaks or pot roast them. Unwind it, there's two curls out of the one potato. Tomorrow morning for breakfast, wind a little strip of bacon around the potato and serve them with bacon and eggs, they're delicious. Different colored vegetables, wind them together and you get the two colors. Here's a little trick cut. Split the curl halfway through the center. If you're making a shrimp salad and you happen to run short of shrimp, mix these in with the regular shrimp. On my word, you couldn't tell the difference until you start to eat them. Now the rest of the potato, you stuff it. We'll call this a little chicken. We'll call this here some hamburger. You might have a little meat that's been laying in the ice box for a few days. Cut the meat up fine, season it highly, stuff it into the center of the potato and bake them with the skins on. When they're done, cut them in two. Serve them on the half shell, just like that. Serve them in slices when company calls. The more company you have, the thinner you cut the slices. If your mother-in-law calls, give her a beak piece like that. Now the second tool in the set is known as the garnishing knife. Everything you cut with this must come out fancy. Watch this, please. You cut down, you turn the potato, and then you cut through the edge. First one way, and then the other. Sweet potatoes cut like this. Drop them into a little batter of pancake flour and fry them. When they're golden brown, sprinkle molasses on them. Serve them with strips of bacon for breakfast while they're delicious. Here's beets, you pickle them, and carrots, you steam or cream them. In making the original French fried potato, cut them in thick slices. Put them one on top of each other, cross cut the slices, and you'll never eat a French fry any other way. The potato cut like this will not absorb the fat because they're garnished around. Pineapples cut for your pineapple and cheese salad, cut them the same way. Here is one, and this is a dandy. Cuts any thickness or any size. Open it for a thick slice, close to the top for a thin slice. Saratoga chips, you can make them for three or four pennies a pound. Just pull the blade towards you like this. If you want the slices thicker than this, open the blade, there's a thick slice. Shoestrings for your Friday fish dinner, cut them down like this. Chop them up for your vegetable soup. What this knife is really intended for is for cutting the cabbage. You know the old-fashioned board, how you rip and tear, sometimes nipping the ends off your fingers? Lay it flat and pull it lightly towards you over the cabbage. The weight of the knife across the cabbage is all that's necessary. Why, ladies, when you get slaw cut as fine as this, you'll certainly appreciate eating it. The crowning feature of the set is the cutter that I'm going to show you now. This is known as the Champion Vegetable Mincing Knife and Noodle Cutter. Now, when you want to make some real fine noodles at home, you roll the dough out like this. Dip this into a little flour so it doesn't stick to the dough, and as you roll it over the dough, that will cut the noodles in long strips, ten at a time. Did you ever try to chop up the little nuts for cake? Well, I've seen ladies chop nuts and the nuts land up on the ceiling. Sometimes you chop the ends off your fingers. When you want to chop up a little nuts for cake, cooked meat, clams for chowder, soup greens to throw into your soup, making a little pepper or chicken hash is just a few strokes rolling it up and down. Why, here is without a doubt the meanest thing in the world to cut parsley. Put that in a grinder, you really grind it too fine. This machine, instead of crushing the parsley, cuts it quick, clean, and dry, leaving every bit of the juice and every bit of the flavor. Now, to clean this machine, you press the button. Rinse it out in a little water. When you're through using it, hang it up and let it dry. 
Here's one here that every lady should have in her home, known as the Parisian scoop. You lay it flat, once to the right, once to the left. When you scoop them out, you'll get a perfect round little ball. You can pot roast these, cut them out of cheese or cut them out of butter. When you're serving a fruit cocktail in the summertime, take your fresh cantaloupe, scoop them out like this, mix them with apples, pears, and watermelons, makes a delicious fruit cocktail served with a little cracked ice like you see here. But here are the two ladies, if you ever do get it, you'll thank the day you've seen this demonstration. When you press, it locks. Hey there, everyone. How are we doing this evening? I'm okay. Not much new. Um, so we got pizza dough, which is my pizza dough, and my first attempt at this pizza dough. I'll give you a better look at this here. Um, it's a bit drier than I sort of expected. I seem to have that issue with dough. <laughs> and it's still cold and it's still warming up here. Uh, it recipe calls for roughly three hours of proof in here. Uh, well, warming up and proofing. So, I'm going to show you how I made this, which I did yesterday. Uh, now, give me a second pizza here for on Tuesday. Um, going to be doing. Starting off here, where uh, it's National Sausage Pizza Day, and so we're gonna have Italian sausage and black olive pizza, and it's gonna be my first time doing pizza on stream, um, and not out of like a actual pizza oven. I mean, I've worked professionally with uh, actual pizza ovens, like proper pizza ovens. Um, working out of home kitchen, I just sort of disregarded it, and I'm sort of trying this by chance, and I sort of think it has a chance, because it's a, uh, pan pizza, and not like a stone pizza where you're going to get that thin crust. Um, this can be on the order of baking bread a little bit. Uh, welcome in Entropy. Entropy. And, uh, Becca, welcome, welcome. Yeah, all sorts of pizza on Twitch today. Um, I, I watched several pizza streams before I got here today. Welcome in, Head Mama Bear. I saw you had, uh, placed a character on the, uh, battlefield there. Um, so we're gonna start by attempting to stretch that guy out. I have moved and changed my mics around yet again, so we'll see how things work out tonight if they're a little bit better. So we got my largest cast iron here. I already want to put like, my oils and salt on the other side now. I guess can't have the mic next to any of the stuff that I'm using near the stove. Just uh, too much noise grabbing it. That's not enough oil. We need oil to coat the pan and our dough. Let's get some music going. see why I lost audio in my earpiece here. That is weird. Are you guys hearing me still? It looks like you guys are.
Can you guys hear me? What is going on here? No, that's not, that's supposed to go there. Oh, awesome. Thank you, Entropy. Um, though I, I think I solved that at the same time there. So I made this guy yesterday. Uh, and so at this point, it still needs to do a final proof. But we've done an initial proof. And we've done 12 hours in the refrigerator. At least 12 hours. Sort of the beauty, or beauty of working with a pizza dough like this is that you can leave it in the fridge actually for several days. <clears throat> you don't want to do like more than like three days, but you can leave it in the refrigerator for a while and it's just going to pick up more like fermented flavor, you know, like proofing your dough longer. All right, so I'm gonna let that go, let that rest for 20 minutes here and uh, come back to it and give it one more stretch out to the edge. But like I said, we got another two, three hours here. This guy just chilling out, proofing in this pan. I'm going to put him back here on the stove top. Um, and we'll get to mixing our new batch of dough. Let's give this guy a clean out.
I think so too, Becca. I do like some pepperoni though. Two level cups of AP flour. I am following sort of blindly. I read it, it seemed like a decent recipe. I don't always tell you guys what I'm doing, but uh, working with King Arthur uh, pan pizza recipe tonight. Or at least giving that a shot. Uh, relatively okay with how that first piece of dough came out. Uh, I do think it's perhaps just slightly tighter than I would want it to be. Probably should have added a little bit more water. I think I'm going to do that tonight. Not much though. Um, this is an actual yeast dough. And I've already forgotten the rest of the recipe here. So pulling that up now. Start with adding our salt. Oops. Didn't mean to stop the music there. And get that mixed in there well ahead of time because we want to keep our salt and our yeast separate here. Grab yeast, grab my coffee carafe because uh, let's not do it in this, that's not the best thing. either. Say so three quarters of a cup of warm lukewarm water. Don't have hot water in my sink yet. And I'm going to give it maybe a tablespoon more, or a teaspoon rough more. Words, Jason. Pinch of flour. teaspoon of yeast, which is a decent amount of yeast here. Grace. I'm doing quite lovely. Working on pizza here. It's going to be sort of a 
relaxed hangout night. I'm going to be making this dough. This is going to take me the better part of two hours. We're waiting on this dough back here on the stove. This guy here. Um, and he's going to take about two hours of proofing here. Uh, so we get some wine. And uh, hopefully some good company. We already got some good people in here. Uh, it sounded like, do we have a battle ready here? Battle is ready already. So why don't we do that? Victory. That's so weird. Why is none of that... Are you guys getting any music? Or did you get the uh, audio from Stream Raiders? Because I'm not getting any of that in my earphones. Gret's heading on my bear. Yeah, I don't know if I'm getting any of my desktop. There we go. Why is things just changing around on me? Um, for some reason, my uh, audio changed on me. I think that's because I plugged in my uh, second Yeti. And that sometimes messes up your audio and that's that's one thing but uh, my desktop audio was switched to completely wrong thing there so hopefully you guys get a little music in the background now and we'll hopefully get the game going back uh, let's see do we got any upgrades here nice Well, let's continue on. Let's see what we got. Throwers. More throwers. So we're going to have to deal with them regardless. Okay. Uh, what is on the stove? Graves. That is my pre-made dough that I did yesterday. This is continuing to proof and I'm going to slowly work on making sure it fills out the pan here. But um, this I'm going to be cooking tonight. This is going to be tonight's pizza. In It's going in the oven two, three hours from now. So... And this one's going to be maybe Monday's pizza. Same thing. But I did this yesterday, so this way you guys get to see what I did to get there. No worries. So we got our yeast and warm water there. Otherwise, uh, flour, salt, a little olive oil. Oops. Didn't mean to shower the counter with flour there. So right now I'm mostly going to need this just to get it all together till we get all that loose flour combined. Gonna use the following this recipe we're gonna be doing the 
uh, fold it once every five or 20 minute method. Trying to rub the last of this flour off my hands here. It just doesn't want to work. There we go. I can already tell you I like this dough. A little bit better than I was feeling last night. And like I said, I added about a teaspoon more water. set now. seems rather off to the right to me. So now we got that pretty much filled out to the pan here. I continue to sort of dimple the bottom here. I want to make sure and get our sort of... I don't have a docking roller or something good to make sure that stays somewhat low. drink here and break into our wine. A 
mate. Mm, not real. Well, it is real mate, but it's fruit flavored mate. I mean, it's. Welcome in. Hopefully you're having a good evening. Actually, I'm pretty sure you're streaming. <laughs> I don't have one of these set up for you yet, so... fellow member of Team Bonin, leader of Team Bonin. Just sort of hanging out here. We got one dough proofing here on the stove and I'm just getting started with a second dough here. Might as well just leave it there since it's just letting it proof. But let's break into uh, a little vino. Um, I've had this on stream two times now, three times. Um, I don't think I've had this year. This is a uh, 2016, I think. Yep. <laughs> Check chat rather than the bottle. <laughs> Smelling just as I remember it. Nice, uh, dark and fruity, jammy. Um, but it's a cab, so we're going to have some oak and uh, other lovely flavors once we get into actually drinking it. that they even I mean they go to the detail of even getting these labels lined up I'm sorry I turned I got mine turned up but this label I got it turned already but that was perfectly lined up with this they put a lot of care into even though it's a mass produce um, typical particle work um, pretty fine it's actually finer than most and uh, obviously uh, their own labeling with it being that big of a label. Oh, that's brighter than I remember it. Same amount of oak and pepper and spice. It's 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 got a definite pepperiness to it. Some wines you even get a little bit of like a false heat out of it. This isn't one of those. It's it's like black pepper. But all sorts of dark berries there. Um, and it's been kicking around some while. It, it, it. Mm. 
tastes like it. It's on the higher end of the wines that I do, but um, it's not the most expensive. Oh! Welcome in, everyone. Thank you for that raid. How's everyone doing this afternoon, evening? Well, hello and welcome. I'm Jason. I uh, cook here on Twitch three nights a week. Former mixer streamer. <laughs> Doing the uh, National Sausage Pizza Night. Our day today. We have the dough that I made up yesterday here. And that's proofing ready to go in the oven. Got another hour, hour and a half on this guy just to hang out and Enjoy life. Just sort of got him to fill out the pan there. And here we have, I just mixed this. We're letting this do its initial proof here. Actually, I should probably throw a hand towel over it um, of a second dough so you guys can see what I did yesterday to get here. Thank you all for joining me. I hope you had a good time. What was that? Oh, it's a Canadian Thanksgiving. Uh, so it, were we doing uh, festive dishes? Or is it Eve of Canadian Thanksgiving? It's, it's here today or tomorrow. Uh, let's see what else we got going here. Italian sausage, we can, get, we can cook a couple of the sausage here. To figure out where I hit it. Set this guy off to this side. gas. Doing lovely. Having a good day. How about yourselves? I am doing lovely. Um, we got two pizzas working tonight. We have well, one that I'm going to be cooking on stream and one I'm prepping for later. We have this guy here which I'm letting proof in the pan here. He's got another hour, hour and a half to go. I'm heating up a little lard in the pan here now to sausages for around the pizza and over here we have second batch of dough that I'm doing to show you guys how I got to here but without a mixer um, so we're letting that guy prove another 20 minutes here we're enjoying some cheap supermarket wine. I often have cheap supermarket wines. I try all sorts of weird and different ones. Uh, generally in the like 10 buck range. That's on average about two nights of the week out of the three. 
I'm not opposed to occasional cocktail or something like that too, but I'm in no way no expert in the alcohol field. Um, let's see. Also do on Wednesdays, I've just started here. Last week I did popcorn. This week I've got a vote in my Discord between Pocky and uh, Kiwi. And so I'm going to close the vote on tomorrow at some point. And on Wednesday I'm going to be doing a dinner based with either Pocky or Kiwi as an actual ingredient. And intended as an ingredient, not like the garnish. Let's turn our fan on here. Close my bedroom door. So you don't have the smoke alarm go off. <laughs> well, I also uh, live in lovely Sonoma County, California. And so sort of a, the local hookup slash all sorts of wonderful produce here. I love living here for the produce. I'm a little torn. I'm not happy with the forest fires of the last five years. Um, but I am, I do love living here. So I'm doing these guys more for color today than to cook them through. In fact, I'm just going to do the two of them there. Uh, in fact, I plan to only half cook these, put them on the board, and chop them up so we get that little, like, we get both get the snap from the skin, but you get that, like, ground pork effect as well. also have stream raiders going on here which I'm sure you all you guys from uh, Chef the Party are familiar with I do occasionally hang out in your stream if you're still hanging out here um, but I'm very much a lurker. I don't do a lot of talking. I don't do a lot of chatting. Um, but I enjoy watching your stream. Cut the heat down just a little bit there. those who weren't following what we were drinking earlier. This is uh, the director's version, which is the one with the, this design wrapped around it. There's about three different ones that they, they have three different lines, I think, just in Safeway. Um, that's obviously separate from probably like 20 in their own place. These are still going to be pretty much raw, or at least raw in the center. Use my protein board here.
for anyone new into the stream. It's also weird that I'm using pre-made pork or purchased pork because early June I purchased essentially a whole pig and butchered most of it here on stream. Uh, I did a whole pig minus the head and uh, offal and I got a drop freezer or chest freezer right here. So been working on that made some considerable inroads but there's still a considerable amount left to uh, be here on stream it's probably still 20 pounds of bacon so I'm not gonna wait for these guys to rest because as I said, they're half cooked. set that aside until we're we'll finish cooking it with the pizza so this guy I've had oh I forgot I switched the board here um, I've had him for a very long time from all the scum marks of my horrible sharpening in the past um, it's one of just a couple of knives here that I have but I do pull this one out probably 99% of the time. I used to use um, this guy even more. I sort of like the slightly shorter size, but uh, the tang on him uh, broke, so I super glued him back in with some silicone around the, the edge there. Um, but I don't use him as much because I don't really trust it anymore. I'm, I'm really sort of almost in the market for another proper chef knife, but I have, I wouldn't want to buy one online. At this point, I would want to hand, handle it, know what the weight balance is, where its center is, things like that. And there's just no, I mean, I'm going to have to drive like into San Francisco to find myself a decent knife shop these days. It's going to be like a all day, two hour project just to buy a knife. Not that. Because it's me, it's worth it, but everyone else, it's nuts. Actually, I think this is my school issue. This is my college issue. Now that I think about it. It's 
treated me well. Oh my, um, this knife, my Santuco, um, this guy, this guy, they've all been boiled, so that's not good for the metal. They've been boiled because they've been, uh, I worked at a resort for my externship with, uh, a resort that had a completely kosher kitchen had a rabbi available pretty much 24 hours to come and help out and so yeah they got boiled um what do i sharpen with i have two stones it's due for i was actually thinking of doing that on Wednesday and I actually oiled my board instead but I have your standard issue Norton block bitch it's seen a decent amount of use on that side this side I don't really only touch when I get a nick or something like that and this guy I forget what his grits are but he's up there I want to say it's a 2,000 grit on this side. Um, but yeah. So that's what I use to sharpen my knives. I also have... Do I have it in here? Do I have it here? Where is it? I have a Vustoff uh, ceramic just pull through sharpener for like if you just want to quickly sharpen something up a little bit it's not going to give you a good edge there's that back to my shelf here Bad already. I still didn't get an audio from that. Said Mama Bear in Entropy. Ooh, gold. Scrolls. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna probably gonna have to close that game and reopen it here see if that'll work for restoring the audio here on it be right back one moment Is that it's still not picking up my what happened did everything change as far as my microphone settings I'm um, sorry guys the, the the raid or anyone that came in later on here um, first off even though I've been streaming over a year now I'm still figuring out audio <laughs> um, and for some reason, completely separate from that, I had about 10 things change with their default audio were on me today. 
Um, and so if you notice, I have this cute little black dot in the back cor bottom corner of my stream here where my captions are not at. That might be my issue. There we go. Now do we get captions? Yay! So let's give this guy our, it probably hasn't been 30 minutes, but let's give this guy our first fold, which we're doing the sort of lazy, let it sag, fold it halfway, let it sag, or if it sticks to the bowl, use that to your advantage, pull it out, fold it at 50 degree, or fold it in half, rotate it 90 degrees. So you do that for all four corners. And there. Well, the thing is, is we're trading arm work here for time. Because we've done that, and it's taken us maybe a minute. Um, not including my hands were already clean, but, but if you're doing other things, you want to wash your hands bef before that. We're going to have to return to this every 20 minutes here. Every 5, 10, depending on which recipe you're following. Some of them are every 5 minutes, some of them are every 20. But generally, it's you're returning back to this on three to four different occasions and doing that um, fourfold. Whoa, Jer's raiding me now too. Thank you, Jer. That, that should say Jer, not deer. Um, <laughs> you, you got that captions? Hey Midget Hedgehog, how you doing tonight? Welcome in everyone. We're doing pizza tonight. Uh, sort of a chill, relaxed stream. We've got two doughs we're working on. I just did my first fold with this guy. And as I was saying, we're going to have to turn back to him about every 20 minutes now. And that's sort of the trade-off we're doing between doing this by hand and just being able to put in a machine and have it be needed. And so, we'll come back to this and fold this another couple of times. And so this is actually, I'm doing this prepared for Monday, Tuesday, um, maybe even Wednesday lunch. Um, it'll stay in the fri fridge for, once we're done folding it here, it'll stay good in the fridge from 12 to maybe three days um, and this is the result of this process from yesterday which I pulled out and it's now been sitting in this pan now for oh it's been out of the refrigerator for an hour and a half it's been in the pan now for about an hour we're gonna let this rise another hour or so in the pan as it, it's it's still not completely I mean it's almost room temp but it's not quite there even an hour and a half later um, and then it's national sausage pizza day so we've got some half cooked sausage here that I chopped up so we get a little bit of this skin snap and we get a little bit of that uh, ground type texture 
and we'll finish that off on top of the pizza. And why don't we drain and cut those up while we're sitting here. I've got some black olives here somewhere. That we'll put with it. So, uh, what were we drawing today, uh, Jer? I, I think I saw a uh, glimpse of a uh, hot dog mummy. I, I know we're in the middle of a uh, uh, drawing hot dog month. I, I, I apologize, I forget your term for it. <laughs> Oh, does he have a new one? Or is that someone else's? Lucid Fox. I don't want to throw the olives on their hole, so we'll give them a slice up here. I don't think this is near enough black olives, though. We, we need more black olives. That's a little bit better. Double this up. But I don't think I uh, told you thank you for following. Bob and Gaz, thank you for following. Uh, Pineapple Bow, uh, if you guys are all still in here, I apologize. I, I must miss. I think I missed you guys. And Twitch Lover, which I think I did get, but thank you as well. We'll save the rest of these guys for a little bit later. Maybe use those on Monday, Tuesday, whenever we get to this other pie. Which, I don't know if I really want to call it a pie. I mean, I know the traditional idea of, you know, the pizza pie. But it's a lot more like bread than it is pie. Especially if you look at like the origins and like Fikasha and that. What do you guys think? See, let's start a poll here. Let's see what you guys think of that. Two 
two minutes on that pole. Actually, I didn't even... That's what I should have put on there. I should have put pan pizza on there. I threw Pakash on there. Making pan pizza, and I don't put it in a survey. What's your pizza choice? Uh, too weak to live. Ultra thin. That that to me it is New York. Um. As far as I'm concerned, I mean, that super thin margarita. Um. That that's New York to me. Um, I can see you wanting, I almost want to say that there's two types in New York, and people are going to hate me for this now, but you have the original margarita, which I think of as being a much crispier th flat bottom pizza, and then you have the floppy foldable New York slice, which... I don't think are I, I think they're like two different options there. But uh, I myself, I'm gonna vote for Detroit, uh, if only because I grew up around there. But um, I I think it's a superior pizza, and I've lived in New York. Yes, Sicilian. I, well, Fakasha Sicilian. Now we're seeing the thin style, like crispy thin style, or are you saying the 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 floppy big slice New York style? Because both of them are thin to me. Okay. Because I just have wonderful memories of, um, oh, uh, Pizzeria by two brothers. I want to say they were Italian, but who knows? Um, and it's, I mean, the business was all they were doing. They were just, like, always there. And it was right near, uh, the Culinary Institute. Which is why I was in New York. But they were like dedicated to making out a decent pie. Uh, it was good business. But they always had the like ultra crisp. And then if you went in there for slices, which is, you know, you're a college kid, generally what you went in there for. Um, they're crisping them even further to order when they throw them back in the oven to warm them up. But, uh, sort of miss New York days. But, uh, don't miss the snow. Don't miss snow at all. Grew up with snow. It's the last thing I want to deal with again. Very happy to be living in Northern California right now. I just wish we didn't have wildfires.
Might as well turn our oven on here. Uh, 450. Let's give this guy another fold. I don't think it's been 20 minutes, but... trying to stretch not tear here but you notice it's already getting nice and smooth like you get from kneading it heavily and that's sort of the I think we sort of realized here that with science that uh, you can just what is all sorts of rage time Welcome Raiders. Thank you for that raid, uh, Andrew Cooks. Thank you for that follow, Mowgli Boat. Mowgli Bogli along that line. Welcome in. We are doing National Sausage Pizza Day. What were we cooking earlier? I stopped by, I think, for a couple minutes in there. I didn't quite... I get a horrible memory. <laughs> um, but we're doing our fourth, or our second fold of four on our pizza dough for either Monday or Tuesday. So you guys see how I made... this dough last night and so this has been proofing in the pan since I started and that was uh, well I got it out around four o'clock and uh, it's been in the pan here since about five um, so or so since 430 ish so that's been in the pan here for an hour we're gonna let this sit for up to another hour continuing to proof relax hang out in the pan we have some sausage that's half cooked here so we get decent snap some nice color on the outside but we still get that uh, like ground sausage flavor too get some black olive going on here and um, what else am I fearing? Oh, sauce. What did I do with my spare container of sauce? On Friday night, I made a roasted tomato sauce. So this is a combination of farmer's market and Roma tomatoes, and a couple corn de toro peppers, garlic, red onion, um, all cooked down, pureed. Um, I think there's some more love in there. I forget what all I threw in there yesterday. But uh, we reserved some of that for today. The other half of that was on the uh, meatball sub that I made on Friday. Those were great. We need to... So we'll set that off here too get room temperish 
And lastly, we need to grate some cheese. It's lighter than you might expect. I wouldn't say it's pumpkin. Eh, maybe slightly borked. Let's try it on this camera. Of course, when I show up to that camera, I can't see what you guys see, so. But, <coughs> excuse me. Um, this is lighter than you would probably expect from a tomato sauce especially since I uh, roasted it but um, yeah I sort of expect that camera to be a bit better than the webcam Well, that board is pretty much right on. And those uh, olives are not like the super black black olives either. So they're sort of, they're not too bad either. Where's my music? Don't need the overhead fan, and I'm done with the sausage. Though at the same time with the webcam here, uh, too weak to live. I don't have that modified at all, um, so that's straight up standard because. I have found with the, at least with the 920s that you change any other settings or modifications in OBS and uh, they just immediately start losing quality and so I've just left it standard. I wish I could have nothing but 4K cameras. I don't have any.
Actually, I really wish I had 8K cameras so that I could zoom. So that should be enough cheese. You think they'll handle us for one pizza? It's actually for two. Uh, I got another container clean. Got about half of that left there. Good Formula One race this morning. I don't know if anyone's was watching that earlier today or yesterday, depending on where you are. Had a good season so far. A lot of interesting races where it, it wasn't just... I mean, yeah, you got Mercedes, obvious front runner, but uh, there, there's always been a little something going on with all these races that kept it interesting. Yes. Hello, Minnesota Taz. How are we doing this evening? Um, how did the Puffy Tacos turn out, Andrew Cooks? I apologize. I sort of got distracted there. Um, I saw that you were doing those. It sounds like a really cool uh, recipe. It sounds like something that my mom used to do all the time. But for those joining us in here, we have our mozzarella black olives, par cooked Italian sausage, our pre made roasted tomato sauce, even though, yeah, like too weak to live. That's looking a little more orange than red there, but that's a red sauce. It should be redder than that. But it's like a bright red. Um, and we have a no mixer dough that I'm slowly folding here. And tonight's dough that is warming up and proofing in our pan here. Oh, we got a battle ready to go. I apologize. I didn't hear the message for that. Oh, I should start a battle. There we go. Well, now we get audio. That's awesome. said Mama Bear. Uh, let's go for the hard one. Let's see, what do we got? Busters, busters, throwers, tanks, busters, throwers, throwers over here. So maybe if someone's got a rogue, throw it over in the top east corner top left and I'm gonna put my guy here against that big 
force. So anyways, we got this guy proofing. Let's give this guy another fold here. It's probably not been 20 minutes, but it's working out all right anyways. It's already got, I mean, if you guys have been watching and following along here, we already got a nice smooth exterior to this dough. And I haven't even really, I mean, I haven't done heavy duty kneading to this at all. We're on our third quad fold, or for lack of a better term, or we're gonna take whatever side is open, whoever has the most sides to it. Fold that over in half and continue, turn it 90 degrees and do that four times until we've sealed it back into a envelope or a package. If you got a pan and it's six to the pan that can help you stretch it out, you don't really want to just yank on it because um, it's going to pull on things too much and it's going to cause it to tear. You want to stretch it. You don't want to tear it. So, using gravity to my advantage as best available. And we'll let him sit for another 20 minutes. We'll do our final fold on him. Then we'll let him rest for 40-ish minutes, wrap it, and he'll go in the fridge. And then you can leave it in the fridge. Like I said, you want to do at least 12 hours, but I'm talking Tuesday, maybe Wednesday with it, where I will then take it out and let it sit for about half an hour and then stretch it out to the pan and allow it to proof up and warm back up. We got our oven up the temp here. Almost happy to go in there with that pizza now. Although it, they did say I needed more time to proof it. I don't know. Follow the recipe. Do what I want. What do you guys say? Do we just go ahead and cook it now? Because Let's go ahead and do this up, because this is, I think this has got enough proof to it. I think we're going to be good with this. We got our oven up to temp. So we're going to start by laying our pizza with cheese, not with sauce with cheese all the way to the edge and put the chunks on the inside though this is going to give us our what frico we're going to get New vision, thank you for that follow. And let's do sausage first. Again, this is half cooked. We're going to finish it here in a single layer. Well, this is actually first pizza I've done on stream here, even though I've been streaming a little bit more than a year. I've, well, 
14 months now? Something like that. Uh, although only since June here on Mixer, since I'm a former Mixer streamer. So I'm relatively new to Twitch, even though I've been streaming. Do you keep a pretty rigid schedule of 4.30 Pacific, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays? Do our sauce now. there we'll finish it off with final cap of cheese here for anyone that's just coming in I didn't really cube or block any of it I just when I got down to the last little bit of it I chose to chop it up with my knife rather than try and shred it down to the nub. There we go. Sweep the counter onto the pizza. That's the way you do it. <laughs> Alright, so this guy's going in. 450 degree oven bottom rack I'm going to take a look at them in 18 minutes awesome anyone else new and joining in huh and I was worried if I was going to have enough sauce for this. <laughs> mm. Love roasted tomato sauce. I very rarely make anything else at home. Um, it's also so much easier than your, your traditional tomato sauces. Well, it depends on your definition of easy. Because your traditional tomato sauce, it's sort of like a stock. You, you put it on a pan, and you just let it cook and cook and cook and cook. Develop all those deep flavors. The, the roasted tomato sauce that I typically do, it just gets boiled down into 40 minutes, or this was closer to 90 minutes, of roasting tomatoes and peppers and blending those in. So, takes a little bit more attention, but not nearly as long. Sort of one of those trade-offs. Sort of like what we're doing here with the dough. The, the dough, the pizza dough, you could easily make just as beautiful of a pizza dough. In fact, the cheese pizza did, earlier today, uh, make a dough using uh, a mixer. I could have easily just put this in a mixer, let it go at it for 20 minutes, and I wouldn't have to come back to this every 20 minutes. I also do some rather poor screen printing now and then on stream. I'm new and a beginner and amateur and um, 
toying with the idea of doing like small scale custom screen printing more like a friends and family basis sort of a thing than an actual business but uh that's something I've been toying with. I've done one stream on Mixer, and I've done one stream here on Twitch, toying around with uh, screen printing. But uh, back to Formula One. Ooh, good race today. Do a little clean up here while we're waiting. Can't see what I'm doing. Unfortunately, don't have a dishwasher, so I am my dishwasher. I'm going to throw this up here right back. Sorry about that noise. I meant to do that. I think this is going to go pretty well with our pizza tonight. I think I made a good choice there. Then again, I've had, I think I said other years than this, I've definitely had this wine before. I don't think I've had 2016. Um, as I was saying before, lots of dark, deep, heavy berry, and um, decent amount of oak. This is spice, 
you can tell it's been sitting around for a minute. Tasty though. And it's going to go well with the spice of the pizza. But for any of you new into the stream, let's see, let's open this up. Thank you for that follow, Johnny. Awesome. So we have my Discord here. And uh, enjoying, you get the rules. I have my stream alerts here, which you guys can follow to your own servers. Uh, my walk-in, the walk-in is my uh, general chat. We have a Formula One dedicated chat here, where I was talking alone most of this morning. Usually, we have a couple more people joining it. But uh, I was bringing you over here because on Wednesday we have the voting. I'm going to stop this vote tomorrow whenever I feel like it. Uh, and on Wednesday I'm going to have to cook with either Pocky, the, I believe it's Japanese, uh, chocolate coated or strawberry coated uh, biscuits. Uh, and that's currently in the lead now. Or we have Kiwi. And I'll use that as an ingredient. Uh, if you look here, last week's challenge that won out was popcorn. It was popcorn versus uh, uh, hot dog water as far as an ingredient. And so for in the food, food picks, we have uh, the popcorn cake I made last week, or earlier this on Wednesday. We have the meatloaf I made that had five cups of popcorn in it. Uh, a popcorn slaw, which was meh. It was probably the loser of the night. Uh, still working on that popcorn cake. That turned out great. The meatloaf was the star, though. You couldn't even tell that there was popcorn in there. Uh, it was great substitution, great way to use it up in there. Uh, and so... Whichever wins the vote next week, or by tomorrow, going to be uh, cooking with that on Wednesday. Uh, back to the board here. Oh, hey, Kev. Welcome in. <laughs> Johnny, I appreciate that. Welcome in. Welcome in, Kev. We're working on uh, pizza tonight. We got our pan pizza in the oven with another just under seven minutes to go here. Working on... What I did tonight is I had a dough prepared ahead of time that I made yesterday. And this guy I made during the stream. We're almost done there with this guy. He's looking beautiful now. Nice and soft and elastic. Um, doesn't look like it's looking a little more torn on that side, but we got more one more fold to go with him, and then he'll be able to sit in the fridge using a method. So since I don't have a stand mixer, I don't have myself a KitchenAid or a uh, Arcansum. Probably butchering that term, which is the one I really want. Um, more like a she's to me. <laughs> uh, doing the no mix mixer method here. So hand kneading instead of just putting in a machine and let it go for 10-20 minutes. 
Dono bar, I don't have one. I, I, I had one a couple months ago for uh, the Arkansom. I uh, think I will be getting that anyways, though. But uh, we, we do have the, the Dono info down there. Big Davey paying me for uh, last Friday's uh, foot long. Since I was making meatball subs on Friday. Oh, let's throw together a salad. I still got this little gem lettuce. bought myself a grab and go box or a sort of CSA box today or on Friday I keep forgetting I got these melons to eat in the morning too I've got two beautiful melons in here that I haven't touched those are just gorgeous That's going to be breakfast tomorrow, I think. Yep, two beautiful, be beautiful melons. We got a head of Little Gem Lettuce. Cutesy little guy. I love them. They're perfect for a little one-person salad. And we're not going to do tomato tonight because I don't have tomato. stuff in my refrigerator. Oh. Do a quick little quarter slice here. Wash, so let's wash it again. A little heavy on carrot. Actually, that's probably enough. Thank you for that follow, Vanderline. How you doing this evening? Welcome in. Glad to have you. Working on making pizza. Working on making a little side salad here. Go along with it. Maybe a couple of carrot sticks because I got too much carrot for the salad. We got another probably three minutes, minute, on our first pan pizza. It's in the oven. We got Italian sausage and black olive pizza for National Sausage Pizza Day. I was just telling people uh, about the vote on Discord for Wednesday. And next Friday I'm doing something actually, excuse me, burping here, um, a little different. Going to be doing more of a national theme night, going to be doing a Swiss food theme night. 
going to be doing a veal dish. Reminds me almost like a northern Italian veal dish. Sort of like a sautéed uh, veal dish with some lemon, some white wine, um, all of those typical uh, characters. And you're going to put that with... Um, ooh, forgetting the proper term for a Swiss potato uh, pancake. But uh, they're potato pancakes. And going to do a Swiss uh, cake roll. Let's take a look at our pizza. That definitely needs a little bit more time. So we're going to give that... I'm going to give it four minutes. Roasty sounds familiar. I have such a horrible memory for specific names and dates and that sort of a thing. Uh, I need to be able to see it, hold it, that sort of a thing. But that sounds right. A little ranch dressing there. Let's do a little since I pulled it out of the fridge already, I got a little Parmesan here. Well, actually, it's a pretty big hunk of Parmesan, but... We'll leave that out for the pizza. And I'll trust you for this. A little salt, a little pepper. I should have saved myself a tomato. Um, I had those four gorgeous tomatoes from the farmer's market on Friday. And it was great in that first salad that I made with the meatball sub. I should have saved myself a second one for tonight because I knew I had the second. Uh, had a lettuce. Words. Can't remember them. Oh. That's sort of small for that bowl, but oh well. I think that alarm is actually even louder in my ear 
after it's gone through a microphone. you guys see what we got going here. I want to check out what we're doing on the bottom here. I think I'm actually happy with that. I think I'm going to stay with that there. We're going to chill and let that hang out. Let's do our uh, stream raiders battle here. That carrot was good. Yum. Can't even wait for this pizza. This pizza is going to be amazing. I think that's going to call it for tonight. Let's count, kill this oven. Let's give our dough another fold here. Well, we're going to call it night for uh, Stream Raiders here. Grats, Trigger Happy. Welcome in. Head Mom Bever. We'll continue on on Wednesday with whatever you guys decide in Discord. I'll have to figure out what to do with it. I honestly don't have plans for either Kiwi or Pocky yet. I had a better idea what I was going to do with popcorn than I did at this point. So, got our salad there. Got our pizza there. Let's do our final fold on our dough. Or rather, did we do our final rough fold? Let's do a final fold. <laughs> it's not going to matter the end of the world if I do one more extra fold in this. But yeah, that's nice and elastic now. This is like almost ready to go as it is. But uh, like I said, you can put this in the fridge. You want to give it at least 12 hours at this point. 24, 36, two, three days, you're perfectly good. It's actually going to build up more flavor, give you a more developed uh, final product. Uh, so you just wrap this plastic wrap, throw it in the fridge. I'm going to give it 40 minutes before I do that, but that's all I'm doing with this. And then you saw the rest of it from the beginning of the stream, or if you catch the VOD in the future. Do you have uh, all of my videos um, all the way from the beginning of 2020 all up on Patreon. So those are all available through my Patreon. Uh, let's see. Let's do a little bit more. Just for pretty. Let's see what we got for a pizza here. Nice, uh, well cooked bottom here. attached over here. There we 
go. Give you a close up over here, the bottom. I'm messing with it too much there. Let's get a photo of this loveliness. It's a little cheesy looking right now, but I'm very happy with this pizza. The only reason it's folding like that is because I'm playing with it. It broke on me after I uh, pulled it out of the oven. Or rather, it cracked. So we got that nice, crisp bottom. Very happy with this. Um, anyone new joining in the channel? I very rarely test any recipes. I mean, I read through them. I make sure that I think they're good. But... Um, I've not tried to make pizza on stream before. This is my first attempt at pan pizza. I've made pizzas in commercial uh, pizza ovens before, but my first attempt at a homemade one. I'll throw a little Parmesan on top here. Give that a second shot here. Clean off the knife before you jam it into the pizza. Very happy with the wine. Let's see who we can give some love to tonight. to our pizza here. Let you guys hear that loveliness. Not as loud as I thought it would be. <laughs> Me too. That's looking great. Um, yeah, um, first time, that's looking good to me. I like that nice bubbly crust. Got a decent, other than it falling apart on me, you got a decent crust, decent bottom. It's all going to fall off on me though, but oh well. Oh yeah. That roasted tomato sauce. Love it. Um. Walls online, not many people online tonight. Um,
That sounds interesting. Let's go hang out with her. Alright, so, gonna raid Jane Henry here. She's another uh, Team Bone-In uh, culinary streamer. So we got another cooking stream that I'm sending you off to. She's doing a birthday stream, apparently, I'm judging by her title, as well as uh, a whole bunch of lovely foods, it sounds like. I'm going to go and enjoy this pizza. I want to thank you guys for joining me tonight. I'll be back on Wednesday. Like I said, the vote's up in Discord if you guys want to have a say in what I'm using for my ingredient challenge. Uh, or if you want to add new ingredients, there's an option there, too. Uh, Thank you once again. I hope you all have a great night. See you on Wednesday.